Receipt Entry icon is used to enter items that have been received into inventory, regardless of whether they are being received against an existing purchase order. The line below, within the Receipt Number field, indicates that the system accesses the next sequential receipt number when posted. For all receipts, leave this field so the system increments sequentially. To recall a previously posted receipt, enter or select the receipt number. To create a new receipt that does not refer to a posted purchase order, enter or select a vendor number. If a vendor is entered that does not exist in accounts payable, the receipt can still continue. However, the vendor must be added before attempting to post any transactions for the vendor in accounts payable. If the user has the appropriate rights, vendors can be added immediately by clicking the More button. This starts the vendor window for moving accounts payable, as if it was selected directly in that module. The blue triangle here accesses the vendor address and contact information currently found in the vendor profile. Although changes can be made in this window, the changes entered do not update the vendor's profile and accounts payable. Changes made in this window are for this receipt only. If permanent changes need to be made to the vendor, those changes should be made directly on accounts payable. If the receipt is to be entered against a previously posted purchase order, enter or select the purchase order number here. If the receipt is entered against multiple purchase orders, Click the From Multiple P.O.'s Zoom button, this blue up arrow, and then select the purchase orders to receive items against. Similar to the From Multiple Requisitions feature when creating purchase orders that was discussed earlier. If selected, the item details for all purchase orders appear in the lower portion of this window. The system defaults to the date ACPAC was started for the receipt date. This date, of course, can be any date past or future. The posting date determines the period that transactions are updated in the general ledger. This date either defaults from the receipt date or the date ACPAC was started, depending on the default posting date switch within PO options discussed earlier. The year and period corresponding to the posting date displays from the fiscal calendar. If one or more receipts have been posted against the purchase order already, that number of receipts appears, as well as the last receipt number. If the receipt is new and not being recalled from an existing purchase order, you can optionally enter or select a template code. As discussed earlier, template codes provide default settings for various vendor, tax, and text fields to assist in data entry. If the receipt is generated for more or more purchase orders, the template code is not available because the settings have already been determined. If inventory control is in use, accept, enter, or select the location code to which bills for the receipt are sent. Also, optionally enter the location code to identify where all items entered on the receipt are received. Existing item details from purchase orders already have the location code identified. Optionally accept or enter an FOB location where shipping charges begin, and the ship view method for the vendor used. If the vendor provides discount terms, the term code assigned with the vendor appears. The vendor account set code defaults from the vendor. Normally, this code is not changed because it references the accounts payable control account, among other accounts, that the system eventually posts when invoices are posted against this receipt. However, for this particular purchase, a different accounts payable control account is desired, possibly to handle a non-trade transaction. Then optionally enter any description or reference information. The lower portion of the window displays items if one or more purchase orders was selected. The Completes PO column indicates if the activity for this detail line is complete. A yes value occurs automatically when the item is fully received, or the value can be manually changed to yes if the item is cancelled from the purchase order, or if partially received when no additional items are planned to be received possibly because the item has been discontinued from the vendor. The 
two items existing from the selected purchase order appear on the receipt. Let's assume only one case of the fluorescent desk lamps are being received. The other case and the image and desk lights are backordered. To receive an item, enter the receipt information for the item being received. The system defaults to the location entered in the purchase order. Change the location if the item is being received elsewhere. If the item is drop shipped to a customer directly, or another address other than the specified location address, enter yes here. Click the blue up arrow to observe where the item is received. The drop ship setting entered in the purchase order defaults here. Enter the received quantity in the next field, and the word of measure of the received quantity. Backpack defaults to the cost entered in the purchase order. If no purchase order is being referenced, the system defaults to the specific vendor cost assigned for the item in purchase orders, or the most recent cost of the item in inventory. For existing purchase orders, the cost defaults from the purchase order. If the cost is different, enter the revised cost amount in the unit cost field. The extended cost is calculated multiplying the quantity by the unit cost. If a detail rate discount is provided, enter the discount percent or amount in these fields. Discounts entered on the purchase order appear here automatically, as it does for the first item, this 3%. ACPAC then displays the extended amount again, factoring any discounts. If tax is included in the cost of the item, the tax amount is displayed next. Items such as petroleum and alcohol are examples of items that have tax factored in the cost of an item. Once again, ACPAC displays the net amount, this time factoring out any taxes. This is the base amount ACPAC uses to generate the journal entry and to update the cost of the item in inventory control, unless additional costs are factored into the cost of the item. The next field is the weight unit of measure. If weight is assigned to the item in inventory control, ACPAC displays the weight unit of measure and the weight of the item. The extended weight is calculated by multiplying the quantity by the unit weight. Enter a quantity in a quantity cancelled field if a portion of the detail line is cancelled. For example, if all or a portion of the item has been discontinued and the vendor is not planning any future shipments. If the quantity received and cancelled match the original quantity ordered, the detail line is marked complete when the receipt is posted. The quantity outstanding displays how many items are still to be received, where the Receive To Date field displays the quantity that has been received previously. If the vendor's unique item number was entered in a purchase order, that item number appears next. Next, enter the number of labels to print for the items being received. For example, if you receive one case of 24, but stock the items on the shelf by each, you might want 24 labels, so each item is identified with a label in the warehouse. The system then displays the expected arrival date entered on the purchase order. If a sales order number was entered on the purchase order, the sales order number appears here. After the receipt is posted, the shippable back orders report can be printed to identify all the sales orders that now have items that can be shipped. Optionally enter any comments or instructions that you want for this item detail, for future inquiry or other reporting purposes. If a non stock item is listed on the receipt, the expense account field displays the general ledger account that posts when the receipt is posted. The account defaults from the PO options icon or from the purchase order. The account number can be changed to any expense account. If the item is a non-stock item, the non-stock cleaning account associated with the item's account set appears. The account here can also be changed if necessary. The PO number field displays the purchase order number where the item detail originated. This is useful if multiple purchase orders are being combined on one receipt using the full multiple PO's option discussed earlier. 
if we entering the item number, the manufacturer's item number was entered instead of the internal inventory control item number. The system displays the manufacturer's item number that was entered in the manufacturer's item number field. Manufacturer's item numbers can be used in place of an actual internal item number. And finally, optional fields. This is where optional fields specific to this item detail are entered. Optional fields assigned to the receipt as a whole are entered using the Optional Fields page. Optional fields are discussed in the Sage ACPAC Optional Fields course. Although ACPAC automatically calculates tax when necessary based on the tax sums established with the value of item, the item tax button is used to view or change the item side of the tax settings. For example, you may have an item that is only not taxed, but for some reason it is taxed for this particular purchase. The tax settings on this window default to the tax settings established when the item is added on the purchase order or from inventory control. Whichever item is highlighted when clicking the item tax button determines which taxes are displayed. Clicking the item tax button is the same as pressing the F9 key to zoom in and observe all the fields of the item in the window, as discussed earlier. If any tax settings are adjusted for the item while entering the receipt, click the Calculate Taxes button to have the system recalculate the new tax values. The Receive All button is a quick way to have the system populate the Receive Quality field with the quality ordered for all items on the receipt. It can be used even if all items were not received. For example, there might be 10 detail lines of which all but one detail line was fully received. Click the Receive All button and then edit the Received Quality field of the item that was not fully received. That's faster than indicating the nine items that were received individually. The Taxes page displays the tax settings for the vendor side of the tax calculation process. As discussed earlier, calculating taxes and purchase orders observes two components, whether the specific item is taxable and if the vendor is taxable. Purchase orders refers to the tax matrix and common services discussed in the system manager course to determine if the item vendor combination is taxable or not, and if it is, what the tax rate is. The item side of the matrix is determined on the details tab using the item tax button, where the taxes page here determines the vendor side of the tax calculation. Make changes to the tax settings on this window if this particular receipt requires a tax override. The default settings come from the purchase order if one is referenced. Changes made here do not affect the default tax settings for the vendor. It overrides this receipt only. If the tax settings are changed, click the Calculate Taxes button to recalculate the tax amounts. The Additional Costs page is where non specific inventory expenses are entered. For example, expenses such as shipping or handling fees that may or may not be factored into the cost of the items being received. Additional costs can be entered for the vendor shipping items or for other independent vendors. For example, there may be a customs or duty fee that's paid to the government when items are shipped from other countries. Enter or select the value number that needs to be paid for the additional costs. The system displays the vendor tax group, term code, account set code, and rate settings if multi-currency is configured. The middle section of the window is where the additional cost information is added. Enter or select the additional cost that the vendor is charging. Then, enter the additional cost amount. ACPAC provides several ways to prorate the additional cost. No proration indicates to directly expense the additional cost to the expense account entered in the expense account field. Prorate by quantity prorates the additional cost amount by the percentage of the item quantity against the quantity total for all items being received. For example, if the additional cost is $10, and 4 of item A is received, and 6 of item B is received, $4 additional cost is allocated to item A, 
and $6 additional cost is allocated to item B, even if item B is half the cost of item A. Prorate by cost prorates the amount of the additional cost by the cost percentage of an item against the entire cost of all goods being received. For example, if item A costs $10 and item B costs $90, one-tenth of the additional cost is allocated to item B, where only one-tenth of the additional cost gets allocated to item A. This is the most common allocation method because it more accurately factors the cost based on the item cost ratio. Prorate by weight prorates the additional cost by the weight of a specific item against the weight of all items being received. For example, if the additional cost is $10, and the weight of item A is one pound, and the weight of item B is nine pounds, the amount allocated to item A is $1, while the additional cost allocated to item B is $9, assuming only one of each item A and B is on the receipt, even though item A may be 10 times the price of item B. The prorate manually option allows the allocation amounts for each item upon the receipt being manually entered. If this option is selected, the distribute proration field becomes available to the right. Distribute the additional cost amount shown in the upper right corner of the window to the desired item. The total allocated amount for all items must match the total additional cost amount.